we are. Hi, Scott Linden here, host of the Upland Nation podcast. Glad you could join me. Hope you're having a good week. Hope I'm a part of the start of a good week, or sort of start, if you will. Trying to get these out at the same time every week, and uh, while it's early for some of you, I'm told it's real convenient for most of you. So thank you for listening, no matter when you're listening. Got a good one in store for you yet again. Kind of a tour de force of how to cheap out artfully. You know, how to do things that will save you money while still allowing you to have a good time. That's the main uh, main topic for today, the main course in our meal. Thanks in large part to several folks who have contacted me in the last few weeks. I did a bunch of research on the topic, put together my own notes from my own experience over the last yeah, three decades of uh, trying to cut some corners without spoiling things too much. So hope it will be of value to you as well. But of course, all sorts of other good things in the mix. And it starts with some dog handling tips and some um, travel, uh, public access slash walk-in hunting advice coming up all on the Upland Nation podcast. Brought to you in part by Cabela's, among others. They give us the time and resources to bring you this podcast. So when you're spending money, well-earned money that you want to get value for, cabelas.com is a good place to start. Okay, so if you're following the news at all, you know that things are crazy out here in the Pacific Northwest or the West in general, and that's not all. Y'all have hurricanes in the southeast and even in the northeast a little bit these days. But out west, well, in Oregon, for example, a million acres are going up in smoke as we speak. Thousands of homes lost. If you are affected in one way or another, and I'm knocking wood because our little affectation, if you will, is nothing compared to some of the folks out there a little bit west of us and some who we've sheltered over here in the last few days. Anyway, my heart goes out to you. Good luck. And, you know, if you're a fellow bird hunter uh, and you need something, you know how to reach out to your friends, uh, whether they're near or far. Go ahead and do that. Everybody's got an open heart and they're ready to listen and offer some sympathy, if not something more practical. Some of the things I'm talking about today may be of value to you as well. Just back from a short training session with Flicker. He is now three years old and we are down to the wire. As Dave Carty described it a few podcasts ago, working on the last 10%. Nice performance on a Covey flush today at lunchtime flick. Good job, boy. He is doing all right. And then that shot and fall part. Yep, so far so good. Had some experience on some of the quail around the neighborhood as well in the last week or so. Now that the smoke has lifted, we are getting back on it. You ever been affected by that sort of thing? I, I don't know anybody who's got any science that will tell us that smoke, I mean thick, pervasive weeks long smoke and how it affects a um, a dog scenting ability but I've been playing it safe our dogs have been in the house most of the time during the really bad smoke still trying to get him a little exercise and we're getting back into that so he's a little out of shape but he's still doing a good job hope your training is going just as well I know things are happening on a week-to-week -week basis. I ask you on the Facebook page every Monday how your weekend went, whether it was training or uh, hunting. Brian Winchell, yeah, well, why are we not surprised that your picture is of a uh, tennis ball Labrador going hunting with a tennis ball? I hope it was a good retrieve, and I hope you're getting some real deals real soon. Tim Newbrand, good job holding up. You still got a month to go or thereabouts. I know the feeling. We are just about ready to nail down our first chucker hunt of the year. I'll give you a blow-by-blow -blow description when I get back. Brandon McFarland, good job to you. You took your oldest son on his first grouse hunt. Way to go. Keep up the good work. 
Um, and in fact, I'll be talking more about that in just a moment or two. Uh, Randy Gazda got an old dog, got a few health problems, still getting it done. And I am glad you're taking that dog out. You know, there's nothing they want more than to go out and hunt and work with you. Even if it's for 10 minutes while they rest the remainder of the hunt in their crate. And Joe Sutter took Frankie to training. That's a, a dog, I'm presuming, because you also came home with Max, another dog. Looks like a good-looking Brittany right there. And clean, too, which probably will change real fast. But congratulations, Joe, and welcome, Max, to the Sutter Kennel. Now, Joe, if you can tell us all how to get permission in one fell swoop from a spouse to bring home a dog from a trip, uh, you might want to think about bottling that magic potion as well. If nothing else, private message me on Facebook. Thank you very much. All right, speaking of who you're taking with you, that was the question in my most recent Upland Nation e-newsletter. And if you don't get that, go to findbirdhuntingspots.com. Sign up for the mailing list, and you're also entered to win a whole bunch of goodies and some other stuff as well. So go there and do that if you will, please. So I asked, who will you take hunting next? 42.5% of you said you're going to take a friend. Another 18.5% said they're taking a child. 7.5% said a grandchild. 8.5% said another family member. And the lowest number? Okay, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't say that. The lowest number was uh, only 8% of you are taking a spouse with you on your next hunting trip. Here's what I like most, and I, that's why I opened my book with this quote. 10% uh, of you said, I'm taking nobody. The more people I meet, the more I like my dog. Well, you're in good company here. Welcome to the Upland Nation podcast. We'll be right at it, saving a little bit of money here and there. First, a big thank you to Sage and Breaker Mercantile. Sage and Breaker are gun care products crafted at the highest caliber. Was using a couple Sunday, getting all my gear ready for that first trip. I know it's like Christmas Eve. I just cannot wait, and neither can you if you're not doing it yet. I'm getting a little jealous of all the grouse hunters, Well, whether it's prairie grouse or otherwise. You're all out there doing it sageandbreaker.com watch the videos always free shipping get the catalog sign up for the mailing list and you'll get advance notice on all the new stuff before anybody else does sageandbreaker.com and doctor.com is where you learn more about my favorite training collar the tnb dual yep still using it just to ensure that flick is steady to wing shot and fall and then that front end one around his neck is all about bringing that bird all the way back and holding it until I ask him to G-I-V-E. And I'm spelling it because I like to think I'm still smarter than him. And he's in the room right behind me. You'll probably hear him later in the podcast. Learn more about the TNB Duel at Dogtra.com. All right, I'm calling this Save a Buck, Shoot Another Bird. And the inspiration, as I said, came from a few Facebook friends who um, who said, Scott, you know, I, I really need to save a few bucks, whether it is because they've been, let's say, underemployed the last few months or maybe unemployed or maybe they're just getting smart about things. Let me put it in perspective for you, though, before we get started. There was a point in time when I had no job for the summer after my first year at music school, came home, and my friend and I went to Tucson, of all things, in the summertime to work. We were self-employed. Uh, I won't bore you with the details on that, but I will say that we were so broke when we got there. Here are the two things we did to economize. Number one, with our last 99 cents, we bought a Frisbee so we could stay out of trouble instead of, uh, you know, looking for other things to do besides work. Second off... You know, you can eat pretty well if you buy one pitcher of beer for two bucks at the East Inn and then just keep going to the salad bar for their croutons. Yeah, many a meal. Many a meal. And I still don't mind eating croutons on my salad, but I just don't think I'm going to ever eat them again plain. All right, let's get to it. Save a buck, shoot another bird. As Ian Matthews said in that Mott the Hoople song so long ago, I wish that I knew now, 
I wish I knew what I know now when I was younger. I think I got that right, Ian. You'll probably call me up and rag on me if I didn't. But anyway, here's some hunting hacks to save you big money. I've broken these down into a few different categories. The first one will be kind of general stuff, and then we'll go on from there. And uh, nobody said it better than Confucius. He said, he who will not economize will have to agonize. And it's absolutely positively true. Generally speaking, you can save a heck of a lot of money in any number of ways if you simply plan ahead. Most of this advice will be in that category, but let's topic first number one with gear. We've all learned this the hard way, and sometimes it's easier said than done when you're down to your last 99 cents and the only Frisbee is an off-brand at some third-rate well, back in the day, they weren't called dollar generals, but that's what they were. The bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. So if you, if you ever do have the opportunity, do invest in something that will last more than a few weeks. Man, if I had a dollar for every pair of waders that's fallen apart on the first trip or um, boots where the souls have peeled off from the uppers man oh man so save up your nickels and dimes whenever you can and uh, and do some of these things donald tyndall one of our facebook friends here at the upland nation has the the best suggestion of the day find a friend who already has two of everything donald you're my kind of guy um you know uh, a corollary to that I'll talk about a, a little bit later as well, but uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I have learned over the years, I'm very lucky. I get a lot of shotguns. Some of them are really good. Some of them are just good, but they're all um, appreciated. You might consider upgrading your current shotgun instead of buying a new one, whether it's just having some cosmetic work done to it or have a real you know, gunsmith do some really good things to it, whether it's uh, fitting your stock or doing something with the trigger or maybe maybe drilling out the muzzles and putting in removable choke tubes. All of those things do help. And if really what you're trying to do is become a better shooter, sometimes those are much more useful than just buying a shiny new shotgun with an Italian name. How about buying used? If you're not doing it already, consider doing it. Um, someday I'll write a blog post on uh, buying used shotguns. There's an art to that. There are people who do it way better than, than I'll ever need to. One of them is my good friend Ken Corbett at Ravenwood Lodge. Uh, but you can buy everything from guns to tents, retrieving bumpers, dog crates, you can do that through garage sales. There's all sorts of Facebook pages now that will help you with that. Check around at your own dog club or your conservation group. They're all great places to do that sort of thing. And some of them, some of them are incredibly good values. I was just talking, we, well, we had, a, we had a guest here for a couple of days who uh, had been displaced by one of the fires and the last time she bought anything new um, was a decade ago. She's kind of the poster girl, if you will, for buying and recycling and reusing and repurposing, which I'll talk about more in a moment or two. You can always borrow a lot of that stuff as well. Um, you know, whether it's your travel trailer, your extra shotgun, and you should always bring one, another cooler or two. Um, all those things are things that sit around and gather dust most of the time but if your buddy's not using it family members not using it and you need it for the weekend or for the week you might just ask of course when you return it return it clean functioning and maybe with a little gift inside but if it's a gift of game make sure they know it's hiding in the cooler when you give it back Okay, once again, I'm the worst at this. And part of it is because I'm just a music major. I'm not a very mechanically minded individual, let alone do I like doing that kind of stuff. But I, I always learn it the hard way, and I'm trying to get better at it. And I'll make that promise to you right now. When it comes to gear, take care of your stuff, and it will last a lot longer. Maybe you've seen on Facebook, and I, I do it once a year, just maybe just to brag, but 
um, I have a lot of boots. And so getting them ready, I don't get them ready for the season. I get them ready for everything because I'm wearing them all, all year for one reason or another. But even something as simple as cleaning and then uh, reconditioning your boot leather, uh, that will add another season or two to those boots. And, and if you're wearing good boots, another season is a, is a good value. Fix it instead of buying again. I have a pair of boots. The one, in fact, I'm wearing them right now. I love these boots. Uh, mainly, I love them because I can put new soles on them whenever I wear out the soles. The uppers will last a lot longer. So, if you are doing what I suggested earlier in investing in heirloom quality gear, in boots, that means a replaceable sole. I think they used to call them Goodrich welts. I think that was the name they used, something like that. But anyway, you know what they are. They're the kind with the stitching on the top. A good cobbler, a good shoemaker or shoe repair place can always put a new pair of uh, so soles on those boots. Or you can send them back to the manufacturer in many cases. Well, on Facebook, Stan Elmore says... Um, Along the same line as the rechargeable batteries, which I suggested, bring a solar battery charger. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, especially if you're um, you are in a place where there actually might be some sunshine. So thanks for that one, Stan. And Donald Tyndall, thank you as well for your suggestion about a friend who has two of everything. I'm lucky enough to have two of every, maybe four, uh, maybe 15 of everything, depending on what it is. And I don't mind at all sharing that stuff. I mean, it's that's what it's for. It really is. You know what I found? A lot of my favorite stuff wasn't created for guys like us, gals like us, bird hunters. It's uh, it's big game hunting gear. It is uh, mountaineering gear. It it's rodeo gear. You know, uh, Delmar Smith's uh, Wonder Lead started out as what they call a pig and string that's what they tie the calf with three legs to the three legs of the calf when they uh they finally get it roped in the rodeo in the in the calf roping competition uh so take a look at other folks in other places and what you know whether you believe in their politics or not you, you know a lot of those great ideas come from places like rei uh so at least get a look there and and maybe uh, find some ideas and then shop them wherever you can. I'm not a garage sailor, but I know a lot of people are, and that's where you're going to find a lot of those bargains I talked about when you talk about buying used. Garage sales, Craigslist, there's so many of those other uh, online uh, mobile apps now, Mercari, and I learned about another one yesterday from our, our fire-related guest. So they're all over the place, and if you're looking for something in particular, that's not a bad place to economize as well. And if you're unless you've you know just crawled out from under a rock how about those coupon codes now you don't need to be hit by advertising to finally get those codes if you just google coupon codes for blankety blank whether it's a retailer an online retailer or, or just a product in general um, you're probably going to score big and who doesn't need free shipping or 30 percent off or a two-for-one offer those are the kind of things that are coming up on your Google search these days when you ask for coupon codes. Someday I'll also write a story on uh, making your own stuff, whether it's a pig and string or any number of other things, especially in the dog training world. You know, who needs to buy a check cord unless they really like that one with the fancy label on it when you can make a check cord out of all sorts of things. I like water ski rope more than anything else it's very lightweight it's a little bit stiff so it won't get tangled around all the you know bushes and things and who you know you could go to the hardware store and get all the rest of the components for that ditto for a tie out stake uh, a lot of guys are building their own uh, version of uh, my store-bought truck vault you know storage system same for crates in a truck. Uh, they're all good. And they're all a lot less expensive than the store-bought. If you're handy at all, anybody can tie a bowline, right? You can make yourself a check cord. 
Bolin. It's a knot. Look it up. B-O-W-L-I-N-E. Um, it's one of the tough ones to do one-handed. I know. Remember that one. Remember that in Boy Scouts? I bet you do. And then purchase early or postpone your purchase to take advantage of seasonal discounts. We'll get into that in in a minute as well but lots of ways to kind of plan ahead like i said earlier and get stuff before you need it when the price is right sean couch thank you sean love to have you on facebook as my friend someday we will hunt together i'm leaning over to the right i hope you're not choking on too much of that smoke by the way i'm always in search of great dog treats especially for use during the hunt because i just hate paying forty dollars a pound for some of that stuff out there and i try to give my dog the good stuff uh, but now i'm fashioning some of it myself sean says save the liver from your last deer hunt soak it in molasses then put it in your smoker when it's smoked up good and dry cut it into little cubes freeze it in ziploc snack bags carry one of those snack bags with you during the day and uh, give that to your dog just the way it is or at the end of the day put some in a bowl of water and encourage them to drink some more and we'll talk more about related stuff like that in our hunting segment which is coming up very soon in the meanwhile final advice on the uh, gear side if you love it buy two of them i've learned that lesson the hard way with hunting vests boots pants probably something i'm wearing right now socks yeah buy it before they discontinue it happens all the time especially in this day and age there's a lot of reasons for it but anyway All right, you're listening to the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden, your host. Uh, I've been doing playing this game of bird hunting for 30 years. I've had five dogs of my own. I'm a lucky enough guy to be able to hunt with dozens of other dogs every year. I visit some of the fancy lodges, but I also spend most of my time hunting public ground for wild birds. And all of those places are places where I'm trying to save a buck every once in a while. I don't obsess on it because sometimes uh, it's just smarter not to worry about it. But when I'm traveling, there's a whole bunch of things I do. And believe me, I travel a lot. I, 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 I was looking back at some of my uh, travels and, and I think the record for one season was nine different non-resident hunting licenses. Ow. Hard to economize on those, but there are ways to do that as well. For example, this year, most of my out-of-state hunting will be in the great state of Nevada. Not only is it close to me, so I can save a few bucks on gas, but they got a great license system for non-residents. You can buy one day for, I don't know, 20 bucks, and then you can buy subsequent days for a lot less, and you can add as many days as you want. And so if you're going to make a five-day trip, it's a five-day license. It's not a 10-day license like some other states with the initials South Dakota uh, and a fixed price. I love South Dakota too, and I'll use up my 10 days again this season. But anyway, lots of ways to economize. How about your lodging en route? Well, you can, um, the first thing you ought to do is sign up for one of the, um, the you know, what I'll call, you know, frequent user programs. Often it's only two nights. You book two nights along the way and you get the third night free the next time around. And if you're planning ahead, like I said, then you can probably figure out how to stay at that particular motel chain uh, three times in a long trip. Join the club, you'll probably get a free night along the way. Book far in advance for the best rates in any kind of club deals. And in fact, what I always do, once I've got a feel for some of those booking um, rates on the internet, I'll often call and ask the individual property for their best rate. And it will probably realize a discount for you for uh, the, the obvious reason. When you're buying off, you know, one of the uh, one of the aggregator sites, you know, whether it's Expedia or Hotels.com, 
uh, the hotel chain and the individual individual property has to pay them a commission. Theoretically, you should be able to save at least that much on the commission. Ask if they charge for animals, if there's a pet uh, charge. Uh, hopefully, the next thing they ask you is, well, is it a service animal? Now, I'll leave this up to you, but my dogs perform a service for me, for me every day they hunt. Um, and that usually ends the discussion. I'll let you decide where to go with that. But when it's 20, 25 bucks for a one dog in, in a hotel for one night, and you've seen some of the things where rock stars will do to that same room, yeah, yeah, I think I need a better rate than that. If you're not already, uh, figure out a way to camp, even if it's boondocking for the night somewhere. Uh, as long as it's only one or two nights, you don't mind, and your back will cooperate. Camp instead of going to a you know motel or a hotel. One of the things I'm doing more and more of these days for a whole bunch of reasons, including to honor the game and celebrate right then in the moment, I'm eating it the day I shoot it. That saves me a buck or two on meals. The food's probably better, except for the guy who's cooking it. I usually leave that to somebody much more skilled than me. Eat it when you shoot it. In some states, that also will enhance your ability to um, uh, expand your possession limit. Now, I'm not telling you to do it or not. I'm telling you to learn about possession limits and how they really work in whatever state you're in. As you know, I am big on taking it instead of buying it when it comes to groceries for a couple reasons. The first is you'll always save money. Second is hunters are economic development in most communities. So if you're not spending money there, whether it's fuel or groceries or buying something at the local tavern, well, those folks are are probably less well off than they could be. So support the local economy wherever you go could be the best thing that ever to happen to them all year take a buddy immediately all the pooled expenses come at a 50 percent discount whether it's fuel lodging groceries anything else all those things cost half as much when you take another guy along with you you take four guys along might get a little crowded if each of them brings a dog, it might get a little bit of smell in there as well. well then maybe that's your buddies too. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, the more the merrier, especially when it comes to time to pay the fuel bill. And consider looking at some of these alternative lodging opportunities, whether it's a rental RV, Airbnb, something like that. I know somebody who stayed in a monastery recently. You know, there's all sorts of choices out there. And then depending on what you're up for and what you want to get out of it, they're all available to you. Okay, we're about halfway through. I'm uh, still going strong, I hope. My name's Scott Linden. You're listening to the Upland Nation podcast. Uh, just a quick break, and then our Handle It segment, we'll be talking all about how to help your dog do a better job. So stick around. All right, you know, I love my Dr. Tim's performance dog food for all sorts of reasons. And I've also mentioned in the past that I kind of rotate through some of the formulations. I like the higher protein, higher fat formulations for a bunch of reasons. But depending on what you want and what your dog needs, Dr. Tim's, and you can find them at drtims.com, has 12 formulations from no grain to heirloom ancient grains and everything in between fish lots of uh, red meat a little bit of everything out there from chicken which is most of the formulations i use on flick and the good news is your first order is eligible for a 30 percent discount just use the code upland nation 40 pound bags equals great value it's convenient you order at the website and they will deliver it per your schedule request as simple as all those other services and Dr. Tim's has simply decided that he will not compromise when it comes to formulations ingredients all the good stuff is in there and none of the bad stuff it's all at drtims.com Flickr loves his I love the fact that Flick loves his 
and at ESPAmerica.com. You will protect your hearing because it, hearing loss is cumulative and it is something that you want to protect. Well, it's one of those investments I'm talking about during the podcast. You want to make something, uh, you want to make a, a purchase that's going to serve you well every time you pick up a shotgun, stick some ESP hearing protection devices in your ears. Four different types based on your needs and your budget. Learn all about it at ESPAmerica.com. Somebody on Facebook just asked me whether the ESP products will cope with wind noise and you know what i mean if you've worn anything else it you know wind crosses that microphone in there and it, it kind of boogers things up yes they work great at the range in the field they're waterproof too 30 day money back trial get fitted locally learn all the details find a local dealer who will fit you to your custom protection for those two ears it's all at ESPAmerica.com. All right, working on something for my good friends at Happy Jack Incorporated uh, that I think will be of value to everybody, especially when I get down to the videos that we're producing later this week. The tailgate exam. You read about it, you hear about it, but you know the problem is nobody goes into detail yeah so let's start on that maybe I'll make this a th two or three parter let's see how far I get I don't want to get too deep and bore you we still want to save money well, that's one way to do it keep your dog healthy let's start with the coat first things first you put your dog up on the tailgate or on something taller than the ground for a reason they're a little less secure you know the woe table that's the whole concept there they'll hold still a little bit better and most of the stuff you need to look at is right there at eye level instead of having you crouch over bend over or expect your jaw dog to jump up whatever so put them on something so that you can get a good close-up look whether you're looking at the coat, you're looking at his feet, you're looking at his face and his eyes and his ears and his mouth, it helps to train for it. And I'll probably put a video together on that as well. You know, dogs are, you know, they're kind of cautious. Flick is a perfect example. My breeder calls him wary. I got no problem with that. I respect it. He's a little bit leery of things that are new and different. People, stuff. So if your dog is one of those who uh, maybe is trying to figure out what the heck that thing is in your hand because you, he's never seen forceps before, train for that. Just like you train for everything else. Show them all these things at a distance. Bring them closer. Show them how they work. If they make noise, start way back, just like gunfire. Bring them closer. Lots of treats. All those things need to be trained for in most dogs at least at one point or another so that they will stand still so you can fart around with their feet or their ears or their nose or pull something out of their mouth or whatever just like everything else train for it and you'll both have a better tailgate exam experience all right back to the money saving tips at least i hope some of these are of value to you here at the Upland Nation podcast. Scott Linden is my name. A lot of this stuff I had to dig deep for, but you're worth it. And I hope you appreciate some of them. If you got more, I'm going to start putting this stuff up, not only on the Facebook page, but also on the, the blog at findbirdhuntingspots.com. I'm going to create a, a section for this stuff. I'd love to have more, more suggestions from you as well. So um, more hacks to save you money. I still regret it when it happens, but I am penny wise and pound foolish. When you don't have enough dough, I understand that. But when you do, as I've said, make the investment. Here are some things that are highest on my list of that investment worthy spending. Your dog, not only great breeding, but a great breeder. 
Your breeder can be your best friend and ally when it comes to training your dog and actually for all sorts of other things as well. So spend the money to have access to a great breeder who gives you a great dog. Shotgun. What's the worst thing that could happen to you on a hunting trip? Well, your shotgun craps out on you. So make sure you own one or ideally more than one that are reliable have stood the test of time and probably have easy replacement parts should you ever need them. And finally, ammo. Yes, the good stuff does shoot better. The ballistics of those copper coated pellets or the right kind of wad or the right kind of powder, all of those things do matter. So if you're shooting gun club loads because they're cheap at Walmart, Reconsider that for the few dozen rounds you're going to shoot in the course of a season. Make the investment, buy the good stuff. Ammo does not, does not work well um, unless it costs a little bit more. I know, I know I'm editorializing there and I apologize, but it's absolutely true. And so please consider those things. All right, so you're, you got your gear, you're ready to go. All right, so en route. What are some of the other things you might want to take a look at? This one came from a fishing buddy of mine. Uh, He flies to a lot of places, and then once he gets there, he camps. And if you're meeting somebody there or you're camping uh, with a group or even alone, instead of a rental car, rent a U-Haul truck. You know, one of those little ones, you know, the van chassis with the box in the back. Number one, it's cheaper than a SUV. Number two, it's pretty rugged. And you can put four sleepers in the back of that thing, plus all your gear. Definitely worth a look. You might get a f- couple funny looks going down the road, but, geez, sleeps four. <laughs> um, I've found these days uh, driving is usually cheaper than flying and a lot more convenient. Uh, depending on where you're going and how you're you know what you're going to do when you get there consider that when you're booking lodging one of the things i forgot to mention earlier which i uh, i'm sure you understand and it's great for us because the fall after labor day is what many industries consider what they call shoulder season they'll do a lot of things to encourage you to patronize them and lodging industry is one of those organizations where you can generally get a better rate in the fall than you do uh, during their peak season, whatever it is. If you got the time and are willing to do it, uh, a lot of senior hunters are doing what they call work camping. They'll park at a local KOA or another RV park of one sort or another in exchange for some kind of work there. They get a free space, free utilities, free hookups, all of that. If it's in a great location and you can get away to hunt, periodically free lodging think about it uh this is one where you should do as i say not as i do um i've conducted any number of experiments on the gas mileage in my truck and yes it is still true thank you president carter for drumming that into our heads many many administrations ago I get almost 25% better fuel mileage driving at 55 than at 65. Whether I do it or not is another question, especially in some of the states out west or the Midwest where you can actually drive 80, which technically means 84 to most of the state troopers I talk to. But it does save a buck or two. Here's a card worth filling out the form gasbuddy.com learn more about them they will it's an app you get the card you promise to buy their stuff their gas and use the card when you buy it you'll get some savings on every gallon and quite often it's worth the extra drive for example off the interstate gasbuddy.com of course stay with friends or even facebook friends on route seeing a lot more of that these days on, on the social media hey i'm going this way to that place anybody want to get together along the way whether it's just to have a drink or put me up for the night whatever uh always a great way to enjoy some fellowship with like-minded individuals and save a buck or two and then if you're of a certain age 
that pass that gets you into a lot of the Forest Service and BLM campgrounds when you have to pay for them. I think they call it the America the Beautiful Pass, or there are other versions of it as well. Uh, you'll get those campsites at half price. In fact, no, no old guy jokes, but I am an OG. Um, paid four bucks for a campsite a couple nights ago. Four dollars. <laughs> you might want to dig into that as well. Um, so anyhow, uh, hunting. That's the topic for the day, of course. And so here we are. Um, if you want to save a few bucks hunting, Rufus Frederick on the Facebook page has, has a suggestion for you. By the way, that was the Upland Nation Facebook page, but you can also talk to me at the Wing Shooting USA Facebook page. Rufus says, the best cost savings I can suggest is hitting the target on the first shot. Yeah, I like that. Seldom do it, but I like that. <laughs> I suggest uh, hunting closer to home. No out-of-state licenses, save a buck or two there, although that's maybe one of those penny-wise, pound-foolish rules, depending on where you live. James Falconer wrote in and says, uh, make friends with guys who have great dogs. <laughs> You'll save so much money not owning dogs. You can make every trip they invite you on. Oh, boy, you better have a real expensive bottle in there for those guys, James, and I bet you do. Sean Couch, one more time. Thank you again, Sean. You're full of them, which is different than full of it. And thank you for writing in at the Wing Shooting USA Facebook page. He says, freeze one gallon bottles of water, put them in your cooler. Don't buy that stuff in the store. They'll last just as long. You can refreeze them and you always have a cold drink of water. Yeah. Along those same lines, you know, somebody suggested freezing meats and the other stuff that you're going to freeze. Freeze it at home. Use them as ice blocks. And then just FYI, you probably learned this the hard way. I know I have. Uh, block ice melts slower than cubed ice. So um, there's your, um, your, your store-bought versus homemade ice diatribe. Going somewhere? Where you know somebody, call them in advance. Find out what's going on there. Maybe you can get some advice. Maybe you'll find a new hunting partner while you're there. Save you a lot of time because time is money, especially when you're traveling. Uh, maybe they can point you in the right direction, uh, save you a day or two of prospecting. Be careful about how you inquire as to those things. There are some curmudgeons on Facebook who get mad when people share hunting spots or even generalized information about where to go hunting. I'm not one of them, so feel free to ask me. I'll be happy to share. But most of that stuff ought to be, probably be done offline in one way or another. Our good friend Steve Zirkel says trade in your auto loader for an over and under or side by side then it will only cost you two shells to miss a bird instead of three to five why am i not surprised the best advice comes from you steve thank you so much i'm suggesting you use stuff from home you know uh we, we are restock right now our travel trailer is our gigantic four-wheeled go bag just in case any of those fires get closer to us so we're restocking for any number of reasons. It got me to thinking about cooking gear, silverware, household goods, whether it's, you know, the extra blanket or grandma's quilt or something to put on the floor. You probably got something in the garage or at home that you'd like to get rid of. Well, get rid of it to your hunting box and get another use out of it. Chris Wright suggests on Facebook that you buy your ammo at the end of the season. It's usually marked down quite a bit. And yeah, so what if it lasts a few more years? You don't have to buy it again next season. Yeah, absolutely true, Chris. Thank you for that tip. Uh, and uh, hope it pays off for any number of our listeners here at the Upland Nation. Uh, we're just getting rolling here. I've got more to talk about, especially this land is your land, our public access tip of the week here. In the meanwhile, I'm going to leave you with this before we take a quick break and listen to a few important commercial messages. I have saved enough to live a comfortable life as long as I die by next Thursday. 
let that be your goal or save a little bit more here and there with some of those tips and if you got more i'd love to see them on facebook or drop me a note at the findbirdhuntingspots.com blog you know, all sorts of ways to kind of get caught up and uh share some tips with your fellow hunters love to have them thank you so much everybody for pitching in this time around and with that stand by got more to talk about in our this land is your land segment right after these quick messages first gunner kennels learn more about them at gunner.com you know a study by volvo yeah the car maker says the number of drivers unsafe behaviors more than doubled when a dog remained un unrestrained i know we're all guilty of it once in a while uh, but when you can try and keep your dog in a kennel and ideally a gunner kennel for all sorts of reasons you know, there's six million accidents every year in this country and if just a few of them involve a dog it's too many Take a look at why gunner kennels might be your best bet when it comes to protecting your dog from any of those accidents. Gunner.com is where you'll find all sorts of videos on the construction and the destruction of their kennels in the testing process. Get some testimonials from folks whose dogs were protected and lives were saved with gunner kennels. And then take the Fit Finder quiz and get yourself in in the queue if you will for a gunner kennel yeah they got them in stock they're ready to go free shipping on every one of every one of them at gunner.com and once you're on the internet go to doctor.com use this code s-l-u-n-10 and you'll get a 10 percent discount on anything over 200 bucks You'll also get free shipping on that same purchase over $200. And, and just because it's so brand new, I just want to explain these again, these dog, dog try enhanced contact fins. You got a hairy dog, thick hair, long hair. These fins, if you will, are like outriggers on a canoe. They stick out a little bit from the original unit, the black box, and the prongs that uh, do the work in the stimulation and the vibration part of your uh, dog training. These fins will help you with more consistent stimulation, especially for those long-haired dogs. They're free in many models, in the bundles and the other packages available. It's all at dogtra.com. Whew, I feel like I'm running the marathon here, but it's all for you right at the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden, hopefully sharing some stuff that will be of value to you. This time of year, it's down to the wire, down to the nubs, and we are trying to get ready for a great hunting season. Some of you are already doing it, and I have more power to you. Hope this all helps. This Land is Your Land is brought to you by Huron, South Dakota, where the pheasants outnumber the people. 124,000 acres of public access right around Huron, South Dakota. Learn more at HuntHuronSD.com. So the guy who wrote Winnie the Pooh, A.A. A. Milne, says, One of the advantages of being disorganized is that one is always having surprising discoveries. Yeah, I could see Winnie the Pooh saying that. Unfortunately, that's not what we want when we're going out bird hunting. So among all the other things, when you're getting organized, learn your own and your dog's GPS system inside and out. If that means you're also using one of those mapping apps, practice it. You know, in no other world except hunting, do we think we're going to know how to use this stuff out of the box or worse yet in the field when we really need it? You know, a golfer doesn't just show up and, and make it to the Masters. He spends years on the driving range and the putting green getting ready. Baseball players, that's what spring training's all about. If you are trying to acquire a skill, you're going to practice that. And that is one skill you do not want to neglect. You want to find your way back to the truck. You want to know where your dog is at all times. And if anything goes sideways, you also want to know that somebody's going to come and help you. So learn all about some of those emergency locator beacons, whether it's 
uh, app based on your phone or one of the spots or in reach units. I carry one with me all the time because you never know when you're going to need help. So that'll help you whether you're on private or public land, but for the most part, on public land. And so there we are. This land is your land. It's a wrap. And speaking of wraps, uh, just about done here. Let me just remind you, number one, ESPamerica.com is where you learn all about all the choices when it comes to hearing protection. Say hello to Jack Homa for me. And Happy Jack Inc., Dot com is where you learn more about Happy Jack dog care remedies, skin, coat, parasites, fleas, and ticks, all the inside stuff, all the outside stuff. It's all at happyjackinc.com. Well, I hope you learned something. I hope you got a laugh or two. Thank you all of the folks who contributed in one way or another with suggestions to save a buck or two or five or a hundred. If you liked the podcast, please tell your friends and rate it at Apple Podcasts. By the way, we're now on Amazon Music as well. So if that's how you get your audio, go right there and learn all about it. Check in regularly at the Wing Shooting USA and the Upland Nation Facebook pages. Hope you'll visit my new blog, findbirdhuntingspots.com. If you're heading out, be safe. If you're not, I hope you got a plan for that real soon keep your friends close your family closer and your dog closest i'll see you in the field my name is scott linden thanks for listening to the upland nation podcast